As always, guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm just trying my very best to give you the most delicious content available, okay? And uh, just know that I'm absolutely fired up that I have this many people that care or that want to see me build a cabin. I've already started drawing up plans for another cabin I'm gonna build. So this is one of many. Be sure to like and subscribe because this content is fresh. This stuff is just, this is what dreams are made of. And I want you to dream along with me because everything I'm doing here, you can also do. So don't just watch and be entertained and spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours watching YouTube unless it's my videos. Get out there and do something like this. Cause let me tell you, it is a lot of fun and it's just a really, it's just a really fun way to get outside, learn something new and become better at something that you could get better at. God only knows I am not a master builder and uh, I'm learning how to build a cabin and you guys are hanging out with me, which in my opinion is a win. This is hard. This is a cutoff from I think the other side and it's a perfect fit. Just have to trim it a little bit. Look at that.
goes my bit. At least I got the windows done. Except I gotta use six windows over there. We'll figure it out. So what I'm doing right now is uh, <clears throat> between my rafters, I'm just adding some, some like scabbing on some blocks so my uh, sheathing could go all the way up into the rafters because I'm gonna have these exposed on the outside and then I can pack in insulation on the inside and then I can sheathe on the inside. There's probably a better way of doing this if I kind of planned for it a little bit better, but c'est la vie, we're here now. We're making it happen. Okay, I've realized there's probably quite a few people that don't really know what uh, I do when I take the router to the edge of the plywood or the OSB. Basically, you can run your OSB or your sheathing or what have you wild off the edge and then you can just trim it right off with a router bit. So this is what's left of my old router cheap bit that I bought off Amazon. So I bought a better one, again off Amazon, but this is Frud or Frud, or Fred, or Frud. I think it's German. So we're gonna go with Frud. So I got this Frud bit. It's called a bearing flush trim bit. It's got two cutting edges on it. And then it's got a little bearing, a little ball or wheel bearing here. The bearing itself is this exact same width as these blades. So when the, the bearing is pushed up against something, it only allows the blades to cut that deep. So when I'm trying to trim a piece of wood, okay, say the edge of the structure that I'm trying to trim to is here. But this right here is the piece that I want to cut off. So this index finger, I want to cut it off. Well, not my actual finger, but you guys get the point. This bearing is going to hit my middle finger while the cutter will just ding, 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 cut off my index finger. So that's how I can cut and flush my OSB or my sheathing on the sides of the building. It's very handy because measuring everything can take some time and also your cuts might not always be the cleanest and this can come along and just freshen that right up. So anyhow, I'm gonna change this bit out and then finish trimming up this side of the, the cabin. I know what you're thinking, man, that is an old, Router, and you're right, it is. It is an old router, but you know what? It works super well. So, there you have it. What's nice is I can set the depth really easily. Tighten that bad boy up, and now we cut. These aren't pro tips, they're just tips, okay? But maybe we'll call them pro tips. Pro tip, tighten it. That's a good bit. Way better than the other one. Yeah, baby. Yeah! This is, this is my dog, Jackson. I got two dogs. Titus, which is the small little black one you've seen in some videos. And this is Jackson. Sit. And lie down in a, that's a combo. One, two, three. 
I don't know why I introduced you to him, but I thought it was important for you to meet him. All right, little pro tip here. Again, it's just a tip, but we'll call it a pro tip. I am doing this sheathing by myself, obviously, and uh, you know, God only gave me two arms and two hands. So to make up for that, what I like to do is I'm gonna come down all the way with my sheathing and it's gonna be nice one solid piece from my sheathing all the way down to this bottom beam here. I don't want it going all the way down because then it's gonna be close to my pile foundation here where the OSB will then get possibly wet, you know, because it's sitting on something flat. So I wanna keep it up from that. And uh, how we're gonna do that is by just putting a screw or two the height that I want the bottom to be at and then that way when I put it up it'll be resting on that and uh, Bob's your uncle. So we're just going to come down, uh, let's go four inches here. And we're going to mark it with my trusty pencil, four inches, boop. Come down here, four inches, boop. And then all I have to do, let's put that back there, is put a screw just tack it in there boop, 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 boop. just a little bit so it'll support my wood bam we're running these up vertically because this is the tall part of the wall boop, 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 boop. bob is your uncle tack it boop. make sure it's good down here do, do, do. Boom! And then she's good. Follow the yellow brick road. Uh, yeah. One thing you gotta make sure, and I learned this the hard way, I don't know if you remember when I laid my floor down on the pressure treated beams, but you have to use special fasteners for pressure treated. Even though you might look at it and be like, oh, this is galvanized or this is covered in zinc, it still has to be treated or rated rather for pressure treated. So I have not secured the boards or my sheathing to the pressure treated quite yet. I'm just putting it in the sheathing or in the, in the wall right now because it's regular uh, you know, regular lumber, it's not pressure treated. After I get those all tacked in place, I will then bring my nail gun again with the proper fasteners. It's an extra step, but if you don't do it, your nails or your fasteners could corrode. This way you're going to be able to see how big it is. It's a big wall. It's 12 feet plus probably a couple feet from the bottom and the top. She huge! <laughs> All right, we have basically sheathed the entire thing, which means we are ready for Hyvec or home wrap or the moisture and air protector plastic wrap thing. But anyhow, pretty sure this will be the end of the episode where you see me sheath the whole thing. Thanks again. Be sure to like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.